I'm having some loose skin removed from my stomach and my abdominal muscles are going to get stitched back together. So let's talk about this a little bit. In a lot of ways, this decision may sound like the opposite to the identity I'm creating for myself. Well, what's an identity? Our identity is built by our actions, is it not? And so here we are. I am someone who loves her body deeply and I am also someone who is preparing for skin removal surgery. My actions are what make it so. What actions? Well, the first action I took was the action to join Brightline Eating when I was three classifications away from morbidly obese. So my desperation became a part of my identity. The moment that I decided the huge ask of BLE was going to become an action, not just a thought. I read the book, and then I took the action of signing up for the 700 US dollar bootcamp. Then I took the action steps of one bright meal after the next. I lost a lot of weight. 70 to 80 pounds depending on the season. I'm only five foot two so that is a lot of weight on my tiny apple shaped frame. It was kind of all over but definitely concentrated on my midsection. Because I am young and I was also naive about the process, I didn't take on the identity of someone who was going to get loose skin along the journey. I'm in my 30s I thought. I'm only losing 70 to 80 pounds. I've got good elasticity in my skin and I've had babies and bounced back all right. I'll probably be able to get the bikini body I always wanted. Or so I thought. So I did not take the action steps towards the type of inner work involved with preparing for the identity of someone who has loose skin. I was instead buying smaller clothes that I thought would look good a few months from now when my stomach was gone. I was over exercising and ignoring my body's weight plateau as if there was still fat to lose. This denial is what informed my actions and those actions became my identity. Until one day, not that long ago I might add, when I saw my GP doctor. I actually went to see him about my stomach. I'm apple shaped, I told him. I'm concerned that this belly fat left over here is still a health risk despite me being in a healthy BMI. He had me lay down on the examination table. He was thorough, poking, prodding, digging, getting me to flex and unflex. And then he sat back down. Yup, he said, that's all just skin. I was shocked. I questioned him and he continued. The abdominal fat that we're concerned about as a health risk lies beneath the abdominal wall. And trust me, there's just nothing there, Krista. I questioned him further. But what about the fat still in my skin above the abs? There isn't any. That's mostly just skin. It's a thicker tissue than you realize. I think in my mind, loose skin was that of an 80 year old woman with that velvety soft looseness of the skin that's on her upper hands and arms. That was my only real exposure to loose skin in real life. And in the photos of people coming from big numbers, there's such an excess of skin that it's very obvious and it's difficult to gauge the thickness of the tissue. Here I was able to hunch over with what appeared to me like a beer belly, but the doctor is telling me that it's actually just loose skin. What a profound thought. I told my husband, so it turns out that all that's left there is loose skin. He pondered this for a moment and then he reminded me that at the outset of my journey, I had confidently said that once I had a year of maintenance, I was going to consider getting some work done. It was the action step of visiting my doctor that began the loose skin identity shift in my mind. Subsequent action steps were simple. They looked a lot like this video, actually. I spent a lot more time looking at myself in the mirror, playing with skin, pulling at it, looking at the old photos and realizing how much more of me there used to be. I felt some profound feelings. One was the obvious remorse about having done this to my body, forced my largest organ to grow beyond its intended size. But then I also had a realization of profound gratitude. Here was this body organ that didn't break during my binges. My skin was the singular organ that simply had grace and grew with my weight gain and just held me, just contained me securely with love and respect, no judgment. And when I started to lose the weight, it didn't ask questions. A lot of it receded and released itself, shrinking with me too. Wow, profound. At this point, I got a little defensive with my husband when he brought up the idea of visiting a plastic surgeon to explore our options. I had to do a lot of internal family systems therapy work before I was ready for my next action steps. Because how could I make an informed decision about my skin, whether to keep it or remove it, if I didn't have all the information? The act of calling and booking an appointment at First Glance Clinic was an action step. The action step informed my identity as someone who not only has loose skin, but is aware of it and has accepted its presence. I was now someone who has lost weight and has loose skin. Actions inform our identity. The action of going to the clinic was scary. 
There's a lot of stigma and judgment around people who get work done, isn't there? It's funny how we're okay with body positivity, with tattoos and piercings, even gender reassignments, but cosmetic surgery is somehow over the line and taboo. I don't really get it. I was now someone with loose skin who is considering skin removal. But the moment you walk into one of those clinics, you are bombarded by messaging about what could be. Suddenly, sitting in that clinic waiting area, I wondered about how many flaws the flawless receptionist must have seen on me. My skin blemishes, my short nails, my loose skin on my thighs, my sagging butt skin, and the wrinkles, my chest, and of course, my stomach. Ironically, I was the least self-conscious about this in the cosmetic surgery clinic, but that was the very thing I was there to address. We discussed chest work, we discussed stomach work. I brought up my back, my butt, and my thighs as well, but the surgeon said there really wasn't enough skin there to justify a surgical removal. This was tricky for me. There's enough skin on my butt to contain a Kardashian-sized butt, and my thighs still jiggle and look bigger, but it's all just skin. But an action of mine informed my identity farther. I intentionally determined that I value my knee joints over my need for a larger butt. I did this through the action of stopping the heavy lifting in my leg work at the gym. My chest was a whole nother ball of wax, however. The clinic had a simulator that does 3D imaging. They presented me with the ability to view my chest as it is now, and my chest after they had done work to it. This was a Pandora's box that was psychologically very disturbing for both me and my husband. I don't think I have fully recovered from this yet. Seeing what could be, it triggered a wanting part in my soul that I don't really like. I did a lot of research and inquiring for a season and determined that for me, the risks of the chest work outweighed the benefits. This was a hard decision, especially having seen what could be, but it was the best decision for me right now. I took action steps around this too. I spent more time in the mirror, this time focused on my chest, and I decided to learn to love it as it is, period. I also visited a higher-end bra store and got some really proper-fitting bras that support me. Actions inform our identity. The process of coming to this decision around my chest was about a month long of almost daily intentional inner work. So my next action step was to visit my doctor and declare all of this. I told him with some uncertainty, I'm going for skin removal on my stomach. I know the form says my chest also, but I won't be doing the chest work. He was supportive and friendly and filled out the forms. He even affirmed that the risks for the chest work were lower than I was speculating. His comment allowed me to realize I still don't want the chest work. After the appointment, you would think that the story would be mostly over, but my next actions informed me in a way I didn't expect. I put off the blood work I needed to do for months. I didn't even realize I had done this. In fact, I phoned the clinic and when I asked them, they said they couldn't book my surgery because they hadn't received my blood work. Hmm, figured it was just my ADHD and I had forgotten? Nope, I put it off another month after that phone call. I scheduled it in many times, but I refused to do it. I wasn't ready to have my skin removed and my actions told me so. I was resisting the process. Why? Perhaps I was just accepting the skin. And I was. I do accept my skin with love and gratitude. During that time, I had no negative feelings about any of my loose skin or my body shape. Then one week, I saw someone whose actions painted a picture for me. They too had lost a lot of weight, but they hadn't bought smaller clothing. They continued to exist in their life in all the same ways as before their weight loss, both in their mindsets and around food and health, and in their appearance. This person also had loose skin, and I could tell they had no intentions of having their skin removed either, but this was congruent with their nothing has changed attitude, their lack of ability to transform in any area of their life. Wow, it was sudden, it was bold. I am someone who has transformed. I am someone who got rid of her loose clothes almost immediately. I'm someone who is learning how she feels beautiful in this new body. And now I was fully ready to see that it would be just fine and not even a big deal to tailor my skin to the body and life I now have. In fact, on a somewhat deeper level, the self-acceptance of my transformation was about to be ironclad. The very next day, I did the blood work. Less than a week later, I got the phone call from the clinic and we were able to book my surgery for the time on our calendar year that makes the most sense. After I took those actions, I began to do life differently. I stopped to pick a flower for my hair. I got wacky purple Thailand pants. I put ribbons in my hair. I danced publicly. I laughed boldly. I became a less apologetic person. My inner critics began to settle down as they realized and respected this new identity of mine. 
It was as if the decision around my skin removal informed and provided closure to the entire life transformation I have undergone these last two and a half years. The decision and permission to be this new person, doing the blood work, was the action that broke open the chrysalis of my transformation from caterpillar to butterfly. The surgery will for sure be another action step, but I firmly believe that the largest actions and transformations have already occurred right here in this body that still carries that beautiful, loving, and gracious excess skin. It served me well, and I will release it with joy. I will live in the skin that remains, and it too will spark joy and confidence. This is me. I am a woman of action, and I will continue to inform my identity one action step at a time.